September for any um, any claims from that grant. Um, so yeah, that's that's the issues in um, in neighbourhood services, building services. At the moment, we're projecting break even position for this year. Um, as I mentioned earlier, some of the um, services have started to pick up. So a lot of the jobs with, that we weren't doing in in um, people's houses, obviously there's a backlog now. So now that we're able to go back into people's houses, obviously the backlog of jobs and, and catching up on those now. So hopefully the level of work um, will be there this year again as long as there's, um, there's no further lockdowns and then uh, both regeneration um, directorate and um, development management they're both projecting outturns on budget as well uh, the efficiency targets for so the savings targets for um, tw this financial year 21 22 they're shown at appendix one to the uh, report and the the target is a bit more this year but it's still only 162,000 um however with the, the most of that saving is in neighborhood services um and although it's not a massive saving compared to previous years again because they've got financial pressures um it may struggle to make that that saving this year um i think about 133,000 of that is in neighborhood services so um so obviously we'll keep keep you updated through the year on that, but they they may struggle to achieve those savings. Uh, the report then discusses the capital budgets, and again uh, the full program is shown at Appendix Two to the report. Um, probably not a lot of spend to date so far on a lot of the capital schemes. However, hopefully they'll they'll pick up through the year, um, and the the report does include. Um, request for slippage so any slippage amount should be shown in in this uh, appendix at the moment um again the report highlights changes made to the capital uh, capital program i'll just highlight two or three of the, of the sort of bigger schemes um so we've had um 147,000 increase in the uh, capital program for for works at waycock cross and that's from a section 106 contribution. Um, so that's the, the budget that has been split over two financial years. Um, also then we've had 857,000 grant from Welsh Government for um, the waste transfer station. As I mentioned earlier, um, we've had to redesign it and rework it and, and there's been additional um, things needed for planning. So additional money has been needed for that um, for that project, um, which is uh, I think still I think planning is possibly close to close to uh, going through, but obviously still still not yet started. You know, um, with regards ground in the shovel, uh, shovel in the ground. <laughs> um, the um, the next next one to mention is transport grants we've received for this year. And we received, um, in total, we received nearly 2.5 million in transport grants for this year. And they're highlighted in paragraph 2.13. Um, so there's a scheme, a road safety capital grant um, for a scheme, um, or two schemes actually, East Aberthaw to Charleston and um, scheme in Fort Mon as well. It was 611,000 for a, a safer routes and communities scheme um, and that's been awarded for to Fairfield Primary School scheme um, it's for a, a street design scheme there and then the next two are, are active travel money so 635,000 um, awarded for various different schemes and then um, just over a million for a active travel route in St. Athen. Um, and then the last one is 369,000 um, for uh, bus stop improvements um, throughout the uh, throughout the authority. Um, and then the last one to mention, I think, is the uh, yeah, the 
We've received 755,000 for highway refurbishment. So that's for resurfacing. Um, however, even with that money, and we've we've got some of our own capital money as well. It's still quite a bit, um, quite a bit less than we normally spend on resurfacing. So um, I think the total budget is, um, I think the total budget is about one and a half million. We normally spend about two and a half million. Um, so so you, you know, we're going to struggle with um, with the number of roads we resurface this year, unless um as we saw last year welsh government sort of gave quite a bit of additional money towards the end of the year but um obviously we don't don't know if that'll happen again so um at the moment the the budget is um quite a bit less for for highways resurfacing okay so there's a few other schemes they mentioned but um but they're quite quite small schemes in comparison um and yeah, that's that's it for that report. So I'll I'll take any questions on that if anyone has any. Okay, thank you, Matthew. I Thanks. mean, obviously this is uh, early in the days of the budget yeah. for this year as yet, anyway. Um, yeah. But it is good to see some movement now on yeah. the waste transfer station. So that's that's positive, and it's you know great to see that happening. So has anybody got um, any questions or comments? No. Okay then. Um, so are we all happy just to uh, to note or to note the position that we are in the budgets for this year at present. Yeah. Okay. Right. So moving on to item number. So, so thank you, Matthew. Thank uh, you. Thanks. I think you're done. I think, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, lovely. Um, you're welcome to stay if you wish to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'll hang around. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right, so um, item number six then, which is the annual delivery plan monitoring report. Um, and this is quarter uh, for performance 2021. So I think it's going to be a dual show, I think, between Miles and Marcus. So I'm not sure who's going to go first. I'm going to start, Marcus. I'm happy to start. OK. OK, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll try and take you through the, the pertinent points. There's a lot, a hell of a lot of detail in, in this report. Essentially, it's the end of year performance report for the entire entire council. Uh, you accept that, and I must say before we we start the presentation, it's the most challenging year on record for for, for any of us. I think um, well, I've been here 38 years. I've never known a year so difficult uh, due to the pressures that we face under COVID. So, despite that, the council as a whole is showing an overall amber performance, which is um, pretty good going, and a testament to to our staff. I must say. Um, one thing I will pick up because there was there's clearly some pressures on waste management and you've heard that in terms of our finances. We're taking a report to cabinet after the recess on the business plan for waste for the next 10 years. And that will also include our, our strategy for waste because waste is costing every council more money than they, they budgeted for. Uh, most councils, certainly if not all of them, um, because the, it's just an expensive service, uh, material values and not what they used to be, um, but for us, they're better than most. So whilst we're showing um, not a particularly good financial position, um, we will be fully in control of that position through the business plan. Uh, and a bit of good news I can give you is in terms of uh, 2021, which is the pandemic year, we were the second best performing council in, in the whole of Wales for recycling. We, we hit just under 71 percent, which is the 2025 target, and we were only beaten by Pembrokeshire. Um, and that's that's with only two thirds of the waste blueprint. So we've still got Panath to come on stream. So um, we're, we're struggling a little bit on the revenue side because we're in that transition phase. But I must say a big thank you to our to our residents for that performance, which is phenomenal. I have to say, during a such a difficult period. OK, so I'll just explain a little bit about how we monitor our performance against the corporate plan. Um, uh, Firstly, the, uh, the performance is essentially measured against um, two axes. One is actions, and the actions are contained within the various service plans for the departments, uh, and the other is performance measures. So they were formally called performance indicators. So the report deals with those two axes, that's actions and performance measures. As I say, the council's performance over the period was, was amber. Um, and those uh, in the executive summary is, in addition to the council's performance as a whole, the executive summary uh, 
details what's uh, the remit of this particular committee. So firstly, just flying through the headlines in terms of the council. So 60% um, of our planned activities uh, outlined in the annual delivery plan have been attributed a green performance status, uh, reflecting positive progress made during the, the year under extremely challenging circumstances. Um, and 40 percent, 93 of the planned activities in the council's entire plan uh, attributed a red status. Of those 93 actions, um, 91 percent of them, that's 85, were directly as a result of um, the measures associated with COVID. So you can see, even though we, we, we perform well, um, our, our poor perform, performing areas was largely due to the issues with the pandemic. Um, for example, not being able to gain access to property to undertake work, as you've heard, was the case in building maintenance. <clears throat> so we've suffered because of the pandemic, but besides that, we are still performing really well. In terms of the performance measures of the council as a whole, uh, of the 149 performance measures aligned to our corporate plan, uh, data was reported on 64 of those measures um, where performance status was applicable. 62% uh, of those were green. That's 42 of the measures, 9% were amber, 29% red, um, and a status was not applicable for, for 90 of those performance measures. Sometimes it's measured over longer than an annual period, and some were established in baseline performance. So really good as a, as a council. Um, of the 20 measures attributed to red performance status as a council, 19 of those were attributed to missing the target due to COVID-related issues. So still very good performance as a council as a whole. Uh, in terms of this committee, um, there were 51 uh, performance uh, status uh, actions and of those 51, 73% were attributed a green performance, um, 14 red. Uh, of the 14 attributed a red, um, nine of the actions were related to issues with COVID. I just say there's a there's a typo in the in the executive summary of the report as it refers to 21 measures. Uh, there, there, there were in fact 26 measures of performance for this committee. Uh, of the 26 measures reported, 14 were green, and three were amber, and nine measures were red. And six of the nine measures were again attributed to uh, COVID-related issues. Appendix B, which I believe you've had changed um, because the original one that was within the report uh, was was not the correct appendix it had far far too many um, failing measures and actions on um, it should only feature 14 red actions and nine red performance measures so appendix b deals with those areas where we've not performed as we'd like to have it also gives a remedial action so one of the things you've been asked to do within the recommendations is agree as a committee with the remedial actions we put forward for those 14 actions and those nine performance measures. Appendix one of Appendix B uh, shows full details of all the 51 actions and 26 measures that are attributable to this committee. And then we've got a PowerPoint presentation, um, which is Appendix A, which essentially summarizes the performance I've just mentioned for this committee. And it also details our recovery measures in terms of COVID and, and what we've done during that period. So in terms of that presentation, pages two to five of the document detail a performance summary and the amber rating we've mentioned. Um, pages three and four provide some headline details as to what we've achieved during the year. Six and seven as a counter provide details of some areas where we are looking to improve. Um, page eight of the presentation provides committee with information on our recovery from COVID. So committee are asked to consider the performance of the, of the period, the remedial action, as I mentioned, um, and to note the recovery measures that we've undertaken during COVID. So a bit of a whistle stop tour chair, but I, there's a lot of information there and I, I, I don't know what to do, I don't know what not to, so I thought you would have all read the papers. So. Uh, Marcus and I are here to answer any questions you've got in respect of the report. OK, thank you, Miles. Um, I mean, you know, it's a very comprehensive report. There's a lot of detail in there. Um, and I'd like to echo um, our thanks from the committee 
to, to everyone who's actually risen to the challenge over this last year, all our staff. Um, and then also, as you say, the public in regards to recycling and, and actually trying to, to cope with all the changes and everything that was going on with that. So actually, I'd like to echo uh, your thanks as well around that. OK, so I'm going to take... Oh, sorry, Marcus, did you want to come in first? Sorry. Very, quick, very quickly, to thank Miles for his fantastic run through of the, uh, the information. That was really good. And the point one small typo out on page three of the presentation, um, which it refers to um, community on the objective two status. It refers to community leg organizations were financially supported. That was community led organizations, just to, um, to to clear that up. But no, thank you very much, Mark. You did a great job of running through it. OK, thank you, Marcus. Um, OK, I'm going to bring in uh, Councillor Andrew Robertson to start with, Andy. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you for that, Miles. I was, I, I, it must have been an absolute nightmare trying to uh, keep on top of things this last uh, uh, 15, 18 months. It's, uh, it's been horrible for everybody, but it must have been really difficult uh, when you're doing the job you're doing. Um, just one, one thing, uh, uh, on page nine of Appendix B, you've got um, the uh, uh, amount of waste that was not reused, recycled, composted during the year per person. I understand that. But... Uh, Roughly, how much uh, uh, material was recycled, composted, and uh, did any idea what the tonnage would be of uh, what actually was uh, 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 recycled or whatever? And secondly, uh, uh, I've, I've got one other question, which is our, our new recycling uh, premises. Uh, I, I might have missed it in the document. There's quite a lot of stuff to get through here. Uh, when, when are we expecting that to actually come on stream so that we're not having to pay all the extra money for the uh, recycling and everything? OK, so I just answer that now, Chair. That's fine. Thank you, Miles. Okay. Um, what I have to do with it with the with the data council officer is provide that to you because I've only got the percentage figures. I don't have to hand the, the, the tonnages, but I, I can set I can send that to, to Democratic Services. To, to get you that detail, because we hold, you imagine, in waste, we measure absolutely everything. So we've got all that detail. I just don't have that to hand. So I, I can send you the, the, the weights of everything, um, all the individual materials, if you like, that, that, that were actually recycled during that period. In, in terms of the waste transfer station, um, we, we, we're in contract with the uh, with the contractor to build it. We've, we've got planning permission. So if all things go well, we're hoping to be on site uh, to start next week. Um, and it's approximately a 10 to 12 month build. So we're not looking at um, bringing Panath on stream unt until later next year. Um, and there'll be a lot of uh, publicity in terms of that before then, but that will then set us up for the next 10 years or so. So it's an it's a okay. extremely exciting project, um, but it, it, is a, it is quite a long build. As I say, we've secured everything, we've, we've, we've got the Drainage plans agreed. We've got planning permission in place. So we're, we're, as I say, we're hoping to be on site next week with that. Thanks, Miles. And, uh, I, I, I'm just interested in the uh, the, the tonnage of the, uh, it's, it's not a crucial thing. I haven't been being badgered by my uh, residents about it or anything. It's just that uh, it's, uh, it's, it's of interest. Okay, thanks, Miles. And thanks, Andy. So, you know, uh, Miles will get that information for you if that's all right. Um, right, I'm going to move on to Councillor Gwyn, John. Gwyn? It's, it's not a question, Madam Chairman. It's just a appreciation to the two senior officers here tonight for the work that they've put in. And uh, it's been such a difficult year. And the report that we get back is so good compared with what you can really expect. It, it's been such a difficult time. Um, I'm particularly interested in the waste transfer system, uh, the new waste transfer, because uh, I was a cabinet member when we first uh, came along and talked about this, and uh, we were working towards this, and I'm I'm looking forward to visiting uh, when it's completed. But uh, well done to you both. I'm I'm very pleased with uh, the work that you all completed. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gwyn. Um, I totally agree with you. Right. Do we have any other questions or comments? No. All right. Okay. So, going to move 
to page four, we've, the, we've got three recommendations. Um, so the first recommendation is that members consider the performance results and progress towards achieving the annual delivery plan 2020-21 commitments as aligned to our corporate work plan wellbeing objectives within the remit of the committee. That members consider the remedial actions to be taken to address areas of underperformance and obviously the reasons given for that. Um, and to tackle the key challenges identified within the remit of the committee with their views and recommendations referred thereafter to cabinet for their consideration and approval. Well, I think we can, you know, we've heard the explanation around those uh, those delays, so we've got that to go uh, back to them. And then the third one is that members note the progress being made through our recovery strategy in response to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. And obviously that will be ongoing for some time as yet. Um, so we have, oh, sorry, uh, Ruba, did you? No, Ruba, did you want to come in? Yeah, just, just, to, it, just if we could add to that, just, just to pick up on what um, Gwyn was saying, Chair, that you know, to express our thanks to actually the hard work of, um, you know, the, the, all the senior officers, but all, all the staff through this, you know, this last year, just to express our thanks. Yeah, quite happy to add that onto the recommendation. Um, so I'll second that. Is everybody happy to agree that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No. No. No problem. Do you need to propose and second it or anything, or is it just? Yeah. No. Ruba's proposed it, and I've seconded it. Okay. So we're all done there. Lovely. Okay. So that's uh, that um, report out of the way, and thank you very much, Miles, um, and Marcus there for for your input there. Um, so obviously, if if you want to go now, you, you're more than welcome to. Uh, so thank you very much. OK, going to move on to item number seven, which is the quarter scrutiny recommendation tracking uh, 221 and 22, and then the updated first quarter forward work programme schedule for 21-22. Now, obviously, the current report, they're the standard, and we're all familiar with the contents of that by now. Um, there's not a huge deal to report since the last update in May, but I would just like to draw people's attention to Appendix A um, under the uncompleted recommendation for April and it's in relation to the draft climate change action plan. Um, we highlighted a number of things for Cabinet um, who agreed that the committee's comments would be fed into the consultation document. And it's just a highlight really that it should read Environment and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee and not Homes and Safe uh, Communities. And then members will also recall that um, as a committee, we accepted the revised action plan last month. It was just um, around amendment for that. And then Appendix D under the uncompleted recommendation 2018-19. And obviously this is the ongoing uh, saga and issues around the biomass and whether an EIA is, is still required. Obviously that's still ongoing. So we've got no change around that at the moment and will advise members uh, when there's an update from Welsh Government. And then under Appendix E, which is the Forward Work Programme, we've got just one report, just slipped for this quarter, which is the Section 19 Flooding Report, which was hoped to come back to, to our committee meeting. Um, but there have been some issues with staff resources, and that's now been pushed back, obviously, till after the August recess, because we haven't got a meeting in August. Um, so really it's about asking if there are any reports that members wish to prioritise or there any suggestions for, for the, us as a committee to look at. Uh, and Andy, did you want to come in? Yeah, it's the, it's the Section 19 report on the flooding incident on uh, December the 23rd, uh, uh, which affected Sully, Dinner, yeah. Paris, etc. Um, I, I understand that uh, the um, officers or the uh, council people who have been dealing with have been ill and that it's now it's now been uh, farmed out, I believe, to uh, 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 an out of house uh, company to deal with it. Uh, it people in Dennis are particularly getting a little bit agy about this, uh, not the, the non appearance of this report. And uh, could we have some idea of when we're actually going to get the report, because it really is important to a lot of people in Dennis Paris. OK, Miles, um, did you want to come in at this point? 
Yeah, Chair, I, I, and, and Councillor Robertson, I fully understand that. Um, the the reports being uh, produced by a, a consultant, JBA, for us, who are working on uh, both Sully and in his powers at the minute. So the Sully report um, is available this Friday and it'll be sent out to elected members uh, at, at that time. Um, we're meeting with JBA to confirm a date for uh, Dennis Powers, which is a lot more complex than, than the Sully report. Um, it will be available uh, at the end of this month or, sh or shortly in, into August. Um, we, we just need to do some checks when we receive it. As soon as, as, soon as it's received, it, it'll be sent to local members. Um, we're, we're also working, as I think uh, Councillor Robson knows, we're also working on a, a, a bid to Welsh Government for um, for funding to look at the possibility of individual property protection in Dinis as, as we were successfully able to procure for Sully. So uh, apologies it has taken so long. It, it's, it's a very complex piece of work um, and we want to get it right because clearly it has ramifications for the residents. So it, it, it'll, it'll, it's either the, the end of this month, uh, Councillor Robertson, or it'll be just into August. And as soon as it's available, I will, I will send it out to you. Many thanks for that, Miles. That's uh, very reassuring. Thank you. OK, thanks, Miles. <clears throat> there, I mean, would, you know, hopefully, and you, you relay that then back to your constituents, um, obviously in Dinner's Powers then. So, but hopefully we'll have that with us soon. I'll okay, do that, bring, yeah. OK, thanks. OK, Councillor Stephen William. Stephen? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bronwyn. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask, um, uh, regarding the final item on there, which was re referring to the biomass, um, uh, I just want to clarify, when was the last time we actually got a response from Welsh Government? Because obviously that, that inquiry is dated at 2018. When was the last time we actually got a response from them? Thanks. I've got a feeling... Oh, I'm that we wrote actually recently. Marcus, I'm sure it was back a few months ago that we wrote again. Marcus, have you got an update on that? We have written Chasing, um, yeah, Chair, we. but um, uh, we, I don't believe we've had a further update. I can I can come back on that one, um, but I'm pretty sure we haven't had a further update on that particular issue. What, since 2018? I know, we have had... Uh, no, we have had an update. I, mean, I, I know they've given a holding response since, but yes, they, sorry. They're, hold, they're holding responses, but we've not had a clarification on the matter as to whether finally EIA is required or not. Um, it has, I have to say, probably largely superseded by events because they are working with the um, the applicants uh, to try and agree a final sign off and of, of a retrospective EIA submitted. Um, uh, on behalf of the applicants without uh, prejudice to whether one's needed or not. So um, that issue, that still hasn't been resolved and we haven't heard the outcome of that yet. Many thanks. OK, thanks, Marcus. And no, I, I share your frustration, Steph, and that's why I used the word saga earlier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, right, Pete, uh, Councillor Peter King, Cabinet member, he's um, asked to come back onto the agenda if, if Everybody's happy to allow. He's, he said he's got some information about res residual waste figures that we may find interesting. Is everybody happy to allow that? Hi. Yeah. Happy. Oh, so, sorry, before I bring Peter back in, uh, well, Councillor Moore, did you want to come in around the biomass plant? Yes. <laughs> Just had a look, and the, the last uh, response I can see is was about the 11th of February, but it was it was a whole more or less a holding response. So we have written several times. Yeah. Okay. Th thanks, Neil. Okay. So, Peter, over to you. Yeah. Thanks ever so much. I um I attend the um, Project Gwerth um uh, committee, um and you will and, and you will know that um a lot of our um residual waste black bags um go to uh, the Viridor plant down in Cardiff Docks. Um, and I happen to have that their report, um, and I can say that for the period 2021, which is the last full year, uh, the Vale of Glamorgan generated something a little bit short of 19,000 tonnes of black bag waste. Now, leaving aside all the heat um, and other stuff that they generate, um, that, that was about 10%. Um, of the total material that um, the, the, the Project Gwerth deals with. 
Um, and I and I find it quite fascinating that their recovery process has led to a, to, a, a so you've got to remember everything you, everything I'm now about to give you you're divided by ten because that's our component. But the but effectively they took thirty thousand uh, two hundred and twenty six tons of bottom ash, which they were able to recycle. 1,250 tonnes of air pollution control residue was recycled, 3,779 tonnes of ferrous materials was recycled, a further 60 tonnes of other metals were recycled. And during the year, and this is the bit that I was so stunned by, I even asked, have you got the decimal point in the right place, please? During the year, 9.69 tonnes, so remember, you divide that by 10 for the veils component, of contract waste was sent to landfill. I, 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 I'm blooming impressed by that. And if you're not, well, I, well allow me to enjoy. Well, I must admit, Peter, no, I, I, that's, uh, that's quite fascinating, actually, information that is. Um, I, I, I wonder if it's worth feeding that out, actually, to, to all councils. I think that's a really, really good, it, sort of working out what our percentages are. I just wonder if that's if we got the time or the, or the opportunity to feed that out. I, I, I just think that's ask my officers to do any more at the moment. I know, well, as I said, I thought oh, <laughs> maybe not, but I just thought that's really, really useful information. But, but and I think people, part, I, I agree with you. I, yeah. I, I think that is that is a there's a huge comfort, and of course the fact that it is under it is under our control and I think yeah. um, I think I hope the committee and uh, particularly people like Gwyn who are right at the beginning of this um, um, uh, project um, will draw huge comfort from knowing that it is doing very much what we aim to achieve and, and so, I, so I, I found that the figure I actually said excuse me chair have we got the decimal point in the right place <laughs> yeah no no that, that's really good and I think Thank a lot you. of people would actually be interested in that because there's been so many issues obviously around landfill and what's actually going there. So to actually, actually see that that project is 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 actually fulfilling now. That that's great. I'm really pleased with that. Um Andy, did you want to come in? Yeah, th thanks. I, I thank you, Chair. I just wanted to thank Peter for that. That's more or less the information I wanted earlier. It's in a different form and it's uh, doesn't co cover the stuff that we recycle ourselves. But this is so uh, fascinating and it's really great to hear that we're actually getting there. I, I feel like we are getting there. That's brilliant. OK, thank you, Andy. Uh, Gwyn, did you want to come in? Yeah, I just want to say briefly, Madam Chairman, that um, in the beginning, you know, there were so many doubts placed on uh, the Verida plant. But after uh, paying a visit and actually going through the site, it was quite amazing to see the layout of the site and it gave you great confidence that the officers down there were very convincing the way this was going to go. It took a lot of stick. There was a lot of stick in the press about it and especially the, the councils that were involved in the, in the scheme. But I'm very pleased to say that, you know, we, we took it on and it's proved to be a great success. And I'm absolutely delighted to hear those figures. Thank you, Peter. Absolutely great. Thank you, Chairman. Lovely. Thanks, Gwyn. Um, yeah, that, that's really good. I'm, I'm over the moon with that, to be honest. Right, we have got, I actually forgot to do the two recommendations with that report. I was so carried away with Peter's information there. Um, so I've got two recommendations on page two. Um, and this is obviously in, in relation to item seven that the status of the actions listed in appendices A, B, C and D to the report be agreed, and then that the updated committee forward work programme schedule attached to appendix E, uh, we approve that and then it can be uploaded to the council's website. So are we happy to agree those two recommendations? Happy. Lovely. Thank you. Um, right, OK, I think, well, that's actually been a, a quite a, a speedy meeting this evening. So I'd like to thank everybody for their input. Um, I think we've ended that on a, some really interesting information. Um, it, it's great. Um, so it's just to thank everybody for their input. Um, and then obviously enjoy your summer and hopefully I think the weather's due to pick back up. And then the next meeting then is scheduled for uh, the 21st of September. So just to wish everybody a happy, a happy recess. OK, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. No start.